Hello folks, how's everybody? Just came back from a little trip, quite a bit of ride, uh, 12 hours, 12 and a half hours, um, well, a few hours ago. And so uh, if I say <laughs> anything stupid today, I'm going to blame it on jet lag, okay? Okay, let's get that straight right away. Anyways, I'm going to be talking about today, today about um, Ayn Rand. It's this lady here. Okay, and uh, some people say the, or confuse her with me. They say that she said thing the same thing I say in different words, or that I'm saying stuff that she said in different words. And so um, we got a problem because uh, I claim I say absolutely nothing <laughs> similar even similar to Ayn Rand. <laughs> and so if people confuse me with Ayn Rand or believe that I'm saying the same thing in different words or some other way, we got a big problem. We got a big problem because I'm not getting my message across of how I'm different than her. In fact, I think she's just the same as all other philosophers. I don't see any difference between Plato and her. I don't see any the difference between anyone from Plato all the way to Sartre and beyond. Uh, with her. They, they were all the same. They all said the same thing. And I'm not only going to include philosophers, I'll include physicists, or so-called physicists, people who supposedly were known as mathematical physicists, or who um, attempted to lay the foundations of so-called physics. I don't, know, I don't agree with any of those. And um, so that's one thing we, we have to look at. S something is wrong if people are confusing me with any, other, any philosopher or physicist from uh, 2,500 years ago all the way to the end of the 20th century. You know, this stuff is totally different. We have a new paradigm. It's a paradigm shift that occurred. We call it rational science. And until you really get it deep inside it and understand you know, some of the nuances, nuanced uh, differences. Uh, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Okay. So that's what this channel is about. We're trying to make sure you get the message of how this is different than anything that has happened until today. One of the big problems that we have with uh, Ayn Rand is there's a lot of people who are fans of hers. And uh, they are, uh, okay, I'll get to, by the way, uh, hold your questions, uh, or you can make the questions, but I'm going to try to answer them at the end, okay? I'm going to try to address as many as I can. And today, really, what I want to do, I wanted to get into Ayn Rand specifically, uh, into some of her definitions. I won't be able to get there. I don't think so, because we got, we got to take a step back, <laughs> We got to go back one step and find out what philosophy is about. Once we determine what philosophy is about from the rational science point of view, uh, we find out that she was not even a philosopher. Okay, none of these people qualified as a philosopher uh, or as a physicist. Okay, and that's the issue. We got something different on the on the on the books right now, and you don't have to agree with it. You just have to understand how it's different. Okay, that's that's the point of this channel. So uh, instead of throwing rotten eggs at my <laughs> at my face, what you should try to do is understand and reach your own conclusions. That's the point. Okay. Anyways, um, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, w one of the problems I come across with Ayn Rand, and I've had this over the years. Okay, is that. Uh, she has a lot of fans out there, and uh, these fans, it, it has become a religion to them, okay? Uh, you know, she's a heroine, she, a heroine in both senses of the word. She's, she's like a hero, and she's also like a drug, okay? So it's, uh, Ayn Rand is a heroine in every sense of the word, and um, I've been there and done that. Not with Ayn Rand. I was a communist for at least 20 years of my life until I got away from that. It took a long uh, process, mental process to, you know, swim out of there, to rise to the uh, surface. Uh, I was an atheist for a little longer than that. Um, it took analysis of science, 
of what I, what is known as rational science uh, to come out of that one. Uh, I was a follower of Carl Sagan for many years. I uh, loved him as a teacher, obviously. He was a great teacher. He was a, a good presenter. And that's part of the hypnotism that got me. The fact that he was, oh, good, look, he's talking science, and look how well he does it, and so on. And it wasn't until I started looking at what, what he was actually saying, you know, the meat, the substance rather than the form, that, you know, today I dismiss Sagan as <laughs> absolute nonsense. And so, no, we, we have to, so, so I understand where a lot of these people are coming from. You know, they, they get stuck on a person and then they say, oh, I'm going to follow this person because I like everything she says. And you don't see the problems until someone points a contrast and you can compare. And that's when your, your mind starts evolving because now you're comparing your thinking. You're saying, oh, hold it. What about this? And what about that? And that's all I'm trying to get out to you today so before you again before you throw rotten eggs at me uh, first keep in mind I've got jet lag <laughs> that's an excuse and uh, and second you know um, uh, you know uh, I, I, I just want to present a contrast for you okay okay uh, one uh, good word uh, comes from Mr. Al Hazan Al Hazen right and that's something many of you should keep in mind who follow a religion and idol a celebrity, okay? And it says, the seeker of truth is not one who studies the writings of the ancients and following his natural disposition, right? We all have natural biases and so on, prejudices, puts his trust in them, but rather the one who suspects his faith in them and questions what he gathers from them. The one who submits to argument and demonstration, well, I don't know about demonstration, and not the sayings of human beings whose nature is fraught with all kinds of imperfection and deficiency. Thus, the duty of the man who investigates the writings of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, and obviously it's not about the truth, but uh, we get the sense, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads. That's the critical point. Make yourself an enemy of all that you hear, you see, you read. Make yourself an, an instant enemy. If you like it, make yourself an enemy of it. That's the best way to approach the problem. If you can put yourself on the other side, that's, that's the uh, rational way of doing it. Criticize yourself, essentially. Okay, Check your, your understanding, etc. And by applying his mind to the core and margins of its content, attack it from every side. You have to attack your beliefs. Okay? He should also suspect himself okay? as he performs his critical examination of it so that he may avoid falling into a, either prejudice or leniency. Okay? 10th century, 11th century. Okay? Uh, Good recommendation from Mr. Al Hazan. Al Hazan. Al Hazan. Um, so let's move on here. Um, here's a list of terms that I plan to be covering uh, in my debate with Ayn Rand. Okay, just so you can follow along. Uh, you wonder why I wear a hat. Uh, they're a funny hat, right? And that's because, uh, you know, uh, a couple years ago, what was it, 2017? I uh, put out a little video in which I summarized or synthesized the rational scientific method and rational science. And I uh, symbolically, allegorically pinned them on the doors of Cambridge University, specifically in relation to physics, right? Anyways, these are the words that um, uh, I'm going to be analyzing between Ain and me and how we differ, okay? And its definition, rational or rationality, knowledge, truth, fact, evidence. What is an entity? <laughs> this is the big one, the, the first big one, right? Entity, object, thing. What is a thing? 10,000 years, no one has defined what a thing is, and Ayn Rand ran didn't do any better. She, she did a very lousy job there. I'm going to cover that. Uh, nothing, you know, what is nothing but a space? What is vacuum, right? Concept, exist. Veshti exist, that's the second big word, exist, existence, okay? Consciousness, atheism, 
uh, free will determinism and what I call narcocap. I'm going to contrast it to my extinction theory, essentially. I'm going to say that all narcocaps, all people who talk about political and economic systems, are out of their minds. We're all going to become extinct very, very soon. Certainly within this century. Okay, And uh, so to talk about the future and about your future, you know, people would rather tell you, oh, you got a great future and you got to have hope and you got to look ahead. Well, I'm going to tell you something totally different. I'm going to say you're going to die. And it's not a very uh, pretty theory. Nobody likes it, obviously. <laughs> I can't do anything about it. And people dismiss me as a nut. And OK, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. Uh, you know, that's a good qualifier for me. Okay, uh, what is wrong with Ayn? Uh, just in general terms, okay? So I lay the, uh, the groundwork here, okay? This is what I see wrong with her, okay? 99% uh, with a bunch of nines after that, right? Of humans make the same error. They confuse ordinary speech with scientific definitions. Ain was no different. She, she, she did exactly the same thing. She confused ordinary speech with, you know, the words that we use in ordinary speech. When we talk about existence, what a thing is, people get confused because we're, we're making a new definition. And, and you say a new definition? How can, how can there be a new definition after 10,000 years? And yeah, the point is that <clears throat> we, we made it crisp. And because of that crispness, because it's uh, now rigorous, it creates problems because people are still bringing in notions of ordinary speech of those same words. Physical, the word physical is a big problem. People don't know what the word physical means. And they keep thinking the, the word physical means something which they gathered from ordinary speech. We say physical, well, a table is physical that you bump against because we say, oh, it's three-dimensional. It exists. It's physical. That's not what it's going to mean in rational science. So physical is going to be a serious problem. And uh, uh, Ayn Rand essentially used the word entity. That's the word she analyzed. That's fine. And for us, it's a synonym, so it doesn't matter. We're going to attack her notion of entity. And for sure, if she couldn't define the word entity, she could not have defined the word exist. That's another one that we're, I'm going to look at. Okay. Anyways, confusing definitions of ordinary speech. you got to keep... A close eye on that. I'm going to emphasize that constantly. Okay, uh, she introduced observers, no doubt about it, uh, in every definition. Okay, so uh, and and that's a problem because it it relates also to the notions that we have in ordinary speech. Anytime you introduce an observer, you're introducing ordinary speech. You're introducing religion, and that's what Ain did. Ain did uh, a lot of religion. She did. Uh, religion meaning she was a religious individual because she kept introducing the observer um, consciousness especially epistemology what the hell's that <laughs> knowledge you know all this stuff has no place in science it only belongs to religion okay so anytime anyone talks about consciousness epistemology uh, ontology uh, ontology is a little different word I'm going to get into that um, metaphysics they're talking religion they are religious individuals because they still don't understand what rational science is about so anytime you use consciousness let's let's name them again just so you get them in your head this is just laying the groundwork for what i'm going to be talking about that's where you can get your questions in there okay consciousness epistemology knowledge metaphysics you're you're a religious individual you're a fanatic religious individual you're a Hare krishna you are a uh, Jehovah's Witness. That's what you are. You're going door to door talking about your beliefs. And that's where we differ with rational science. Rational science is something totally radical compared to that. Okay, And that's why we're going to have clashes here. Okay, There are going to be clashes. Uh, she introduces observed witnesses, testimony through consciousness, see, touch our sensations. None of that. We don't use, we kill the observer completely. Entirely, no mind. Anyone introducing the word mind, spirit, consciousness? No, <laughs> not in not in rational science. Okay, and she was verbose and uh, very imprecise, vague. As she attempted to cover every base in her definitions. Okay, 
and the definitions, uh, scientific definitions should be the opposite. They should be very concise, crisp. And you have to eliminate what is not part of that notion, of that word that you're trying to define. We have to get the uni we have to get down to the universals of that word. People don't always comprehend that. Okay, so let's. Uh, that's that's that Ayn Rand. She said, you know, she was just like everybody else. She was doing uh, philosophy, as they call it. Uh, it's not even philosophy. Okay, and that's what we're going to get into. So, how do I differ from her? Just just on this basis, what you see there. Uh, well. First of all, I'm not human, okay? Uh, I'm not human because I don't think like 99.999999 humans on Earth. So I, 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 I can reach the conclusion that I'm not human, okay? I, I can't be. Uh, I've got different ideas than everybody else out there. So if you want to compare your ideas, you came to the right place. I don't do philosophy, metaphysics, epistemology, ontology, or whatever else you want to call it. I lay the foundations of a discipline known as physics. That's different than doing all this nonsense that came all the way from Aristotle onwards. Uh, I do it mafia style. We kill the witness. Anyone introducing observers, testimony, consciousness, uh, sensations? No, we kill the witness. And um, definitions have to be crisp, rigorous, and as short as can be. Okay. Okay, and uh, continue with uh, some, what's wrong with Ain. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, this one. Um, so that we can get into some examples here. Uh, she has inconsistent usage of words. So even though you define a word and then don't use your, de your own definition, you don't use it how you defined it, then you still have a problem because now you have inconsistent usage. You meant one thing or you said one thing, you use it in a different way. And that creates problems as well. Serious problems because it means that you didn't even pay it. You gave lip service to your own definition. And here's an example uh, of covering all the bases of, of, in other words, partly it's the definition, partly is inconsistent usage. They're both embodied here. Uh, someone defines the word object, okay? And you say, or entity or whatever, the thing. So what is a thing? It says, uh, well, it's shape, mass, volume, touch, see. He, he somehow includes several notions within his definition. And so I come in there and I say, uh, an object is that which has shape. And the person answers, well, yeah, see, she, she did. See, she, she put shape in there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. She covered every base. See, you got to find the universal, the thing that all objects have. And all objects don't have mass. All objects don't have volume. But aside from that, uh, you know, mass and volume are all dynamic concepts. That means you need to have motion, you're introducing motion into the definition. And this is the sort of thing that Ayn does, and many people are not, uh, you know, they, they haven't picked up on that yet. They, they have problems in understanding that little problem that, uh, that, that's embodied in that definition. They, they can't see the problem. And I need to highlight that problem because it shows that she did not have a very crisp understanding of what an entity is. An entity is what we got to use in physics. Yeah, we got, have to use it in physics. Um, and then in that sense, in that sense, she was the same as all philosophers. Okay, uh, there was no difference uh, between Ayn and the other philosophers in the past. And here I, I'm giving you a couple examples if I can find them here. Um, if I can find it, where is it? Uh, let's see. Oh, here it is. Here you have Hume and Kant. I put this up in, in the past. They're trying to define what an object is, what existence is, and they run into troubles because uh, Hume says the idea of existence is the very same with the idea of what we conceive to be existent, to reflect on anything simply and to reflect on its existence are nothing different from each other. The, that idea, when conjoined with the idea of any object, makes no addition to it. He could not tell the difference between entity or object, right? Entity and exist. To him, they were synonyms. He says a thing is a thing that exists. And thing and exist are synonyms. We have two words, but they mean the same thing. That's what uh, Hume is saying. 
And Kant, a few uh, years later, said exactly the same thing. He says, by whatever and by however many predicates I may think a thing, even in completely determining it, nothing is really added to it if I add that the thing exists. So they were thinking of the word physical again, what's physical, and they say, well, what physical is a thing, and what, what is physical exists. And so they couldn't tell the difference between thing and exist. And Ayn was no different. Uh, you know, she did exactly the same thing that all these other people did. Okay, So let's get her out of there. Uh, before I go into um, continue with Ayn, I want to address a comment that was made on the word object since we're on the subject here. And this was the comment that was made. I thought it was important to address it. Okay. And it, said, it goes like this. Let's see if we can get it up here. When you say, we point and say table, right? You point to a table. Uh, where is it? <laughs> you point and you say table, right? Okay. That's what they're addressing here. To identify an object, you are forgetting that you are using a common noun, table. Okay. Because what he's referring to, or this individual, right, uh, could be a she, I don't know, <laughs> um, is that, you know, table, there are many tables on, in the universe, not only on planet Earth. I'm sure there's civilization somewhere out there, they have the word table, and they refer, to, in, in their own language, they refer to the same thing that we call table, okay? And it's uh, some kind of surface, two, four legs maybe, you know? Um, and that's what he's saying. Uh, the table refers to all tables in the universe. And no, that's, I'm going to clarify that. To, to name an object, we would have to use a name specific to that particular object. A common noun invokes a concept rather than an object. And I'm going to dispute that, okay? But I thought it was important to see if we can clarify that. Um, here's my side of the, that story, okay? And it goes like this. It says, uh, generic, the, the uh, table, word table. Uh, when, when he says it's a common noun, he's referring to tables with, with S, with plural. He's thinking of uh, the concept tables. And tables is, with S, right, plural, is a concept. Any, plur any uh, um, mass noun, any noun that refers to many things like people, children, and so on, those are all concepts. Those are not physical objects. Here's, uh, here's a little rundown that might help you put it into perspective. You go into the kindergarten and, you, and the kid painted a little uh, picture. You say, well, what's that? Well, that's the river and that's the meadow. And in the background there, the blue ones are the mountains. And what are all those trees? Oh, that's the forest. Oh, the forest? What do you mean the forest? Is there a physical object called a forest? And uh, forest means many trees. Or you can use the word jungle also. That just means many trees. And on the right-hand side, we can see where the problem comes from. You know, we use the word desert, and it's a noun in ordinary speech. Uh, forest, clouds, you know, etc. And you point to them. I mean, I can point to the Sahara Desert and say, oh, desert. Okay? But see, desert refers to a region of the planet or a region in, in some kind of geographic context. And those, uh, you know, I, what I did was underline or, or circle um, the different regions. You have a forest, you have a ocean, you have mountains, okay? And uh, yeah, you can point to them. But here's the uh, critical issue for, uh, for the word object. And I've been trying to get that through people, but it doesn't always sink in. It has to be the only object in the universe. And it has to ma be made of a single piece. Let's get that right. Single piece, single object. That's what you're pointing to. That's when, when what we do in physics. That's an object. You can't point to forest. I mean, you can point to a forest, uh, but first of all, it's made of many pieces. Forest means many trees. That's what the word means. Many trees. You're pointing to many trees. Many ch many childs. Children, right? Many childs. Uh, many kids, right? People. Many humans or whatever. That's what the words mean. And so you can't point to... I mean, what, what are you going to use that object for called people? 
Are you going to move, you know, in physics? You can't use them as a physical object, like you're going to move peoples, you know, people, a bunch of humans. It has to be the only object in the universe, and it has to be made of a single piece. Anything made of more than one piece is known as myriology. When you point to a table, you're not thinking of the gazillions of atoms that comprise it. That's not what a table is. Gazillions of atoms is not a synonym of table, because gazillions of atoms is also a synonym of elephant and of a house and of whale and of everything. So you can't use that notion of myriology of made of parts or, or uh, temporal parts or any of those subdivisions that so-called philosophers invented. No, you point and you say table. And that's why the word table refers to that object at that moment in time and is not a generic noun. Okay? I don't know how else uh, <laughs> to get that across to you, okay? But uh, here, let's get back to this. Um, and uh, here's my objections to it. If I can find it here. There it is. Okay, the other one is you can call it X. You don't have to call it table. You can give it any name you want. So uh, you don't need to say, well, this is table one, and this is table two, and this is table three in the universe. You're not going to give each table a specific name. No, you, the word table refers to that which has shape. Okay? And when you point, you point to that object you have in front of you, and that is a table. It's going to be a table for the rest of your dissertation. Then, it's, again, it's got to be standalone and made of a single piece. Okay? So those are the criteria to use when you're using rational science. If, uh, if you're going to say, well, table, what is a table? Let me define it for you, which is what Ayn Rand's going to do. <laughs> She says a table is not a, uh, you know, she defines a table. In science, we don't define objects. We point to them. And she says that somewhere else. She says, you point to objects. Great. You did great, Ain, there. But then what she do next? <laughs> she says, you define the word table. No, uh, uh, what you find in the dictionary are descriptions of objects. First, you point to say table. You have a picture. Okay, whatever. Okay, so far we understood what the word table means. It means that, what you pointed to, that object. Now you can go in there and define it, which is what a description. Uh, flat surface, four legs, made of metal, whatever. Okay? That's secondary. That's not what a table is. Table I is what you point to in physics, in rational science, rational physics. Okay? So, yeah, these, uh, these are the nuances that not everybody always gets. Uh, okay. Uh, let's continue here. Here were comments, uh, getting back to Ayn Rand, okay? Uh, here we have comment. The first comment that uh, was made against, uh, against me in relation to Ayn, and again, uh, what I want to point out here is the differences, the contrast between what Ayn, Ayn said and what I'm going to be saying, or what rational science says, okay? And when Rand and objectivists say that concepts exist, which he does, by the way, someone... People sometimes read the same thing and they get different opinions. Some people say, no, she never said that concepts exist. Other people say, oh, yeah, she did say that concepts exist. So we got to clarify that because if we have all these followers, fanatics of Ayn Rand, and one guy says, well, she said concepts exist, and the other guy says, no, she said she never said that, we got to clarify that first. Otherwise, you know, I'm going to be chasing around in circles, okay? So, yeah, she did say, I'm going to st stand by the statement that she did say that concepts exist. What is meant is that not that they are physical. What is meant is that they are something. I like that because physical and something are synonyms. Whether they be physical or some kind of abstraction. Oh, my God. So we got to clarify this. We, we really got to stop there because abstraction is the synonym of concept. But that's not what it means in ordinary speech. People talk about abstract objects. What are they talking about? They're talking about maybe planes or cubes, and they say it's an abstract object, and people then say, oh, that's a concept. That's, that's what's going through their mind. That's their conclusion, and that's, that's not right, not under rational science. In rational science, anything that has shape, okay, or any word that refers to that which has shape is an object, period. We're done. That's how simple it is, and 
obviously some objects can be touched, some cannot, some can be seen, some can, can't be seen. I, you can't see the air. It's an object. Okay. Ames going to have a problem with that. She's going to say that water and air are not objects. Because I love that. Because then she talks about interfacing with them, the touching air and touching water, and saying that entities, what you can touch, essentially, that's, that's her idea of it, sensations, consciousness, observer, okay, what you can detect. And then you can detect air, but that's not an object. That's not an entity, according to her. And you can detect water, you can touch it, but that's not, a, that's not an entity, according to Ayn Rand. Well, I'm going to get into that. But these are the kind of errors, the kind of inconsistencies in uh, Ayn's logic. Okay? Um, so, um, let's see. Here, I got this. This is my counterpart to that. Okay? And here it is. Uh, objects that which has shape. And the synonyms are the first two there, something and physical, which are the two words that um, this visitor put up there, physical and something, okay? Something and physical mean exactly, exactly the same thing as body, as anything, thing, entity, medium, stuff, uh, substance. You may not like it, it hurts your ears, because again, you, what you're talking about, you're talking about what, um, uh, what comes from ordinary speech, in physics, it's black or white, yes or no, on or off. Either the uh, word refers to that which has shape, or it doesn't. In this case, the word physical refers to that which has shape, and the word something refers to that which has shape. Something does not refer to everything or anything in the universe. No, it doesn't. Something refers to that which has shape. And then we have the word abstraction. Abstract is the opposite of physical in rational science, okay, in rational physics. And if a physical, if physical refers to that which is an object, okay, physical is a synonym of object, abstract is a synonym of concept. What is a concept? A concept is a word that invokes or embodies two objects or two words treated as objects, okay? So there is a difference between uh, physical and, um, and abstract, okay? And there is no difference between physical and something. So that whole statement uh, clashes against what we have in rational science, okay? Again, uh, in this context here, they're introducing words of ordinary speech. But the big problem here is the next line there. There is nothing wrong with using the word exists in this sense, certainly not when doing philosophy. Well, we got to find out what philosophy is. Okay, we, that's what I want to get to the bottom of, uh, what philosophy is. Uh, it is a silly, a little silly to say that concepts do not exist. Uh, okay, <laughs> we'll find out because in physics, only objects can exist, so by definition. So when we put the word concept in there, no, we cannot say that concepts exist, but we'll get to that. If they do not exist, we would not be debating whether or not they exist, and that's treating the word... Uh, uh, that's treating every noun in the dictionary, uh, every word as the subject of a sentence. And in that sense, people say, oh, then it exists. And that's the same problem that every philosopher has had for the last 2,000 years, that they've been confusing that which we can talk about, that which we can, that can serve as the uh, subject of a sentence with an object first or a thing, and, or in anything, a something, and then saying, oh, it exists because we can talk about it. Okay, so that's, the, that's where the, the circular argument goes into. And that's why we have to make it crisp in physics and separate objects from concepts and only re, um, circumscribe the word exist to uh, objects. And uh, to say something exists is not always the same as saying it is physical. Yeah, in, fi in rational science, it is. They are synonyms. And she was not saying that they uh, that concepts physically exist. Well, yeah, physical because physical uh, means that which has shape in rational science. It doesn't mean what it means in ordinary speech. And nor was she a physicist just because she was talking about things that existed. Yeah, only physics talks about things that exist. Anyone who talks about uses the word exist in any way, shape, or form has crossed the line into physics, and that's why we have to make all this crisp so it's black or white yes or because we get into all these circular arguments where people say well uh i said the word uh motion so does the word motion so does motion exist because i use it as the uh subject of a sentence 
And again, uh, not in physics, not in rational science. In ordinary speech, in uh, so-called philosophy, which is whatever they called philosophy from all the way from Plato all the way to Sartre, uh, you know, in, in there they invented all these nonsense words like epistemology, ontology, metaphysics, and, uh, you know, none of that has any room in rational science, none of it. We, we brush it all aside completely. Okay, uh, here's another comment. Um, and it's got to do with what, phys again, what physics is versus what philosophy is. <clears throat> According to uh, this uh, visitor, it says, physics is the science which explains how the physical world works. Okay? Okay, I like that. Uh, philosophy, on the other hand, and here we have a problem. The explanation of the fundamental questions about existence, knowledge, values, reason, and mind. Uh, it, it turns out that the first word there, existence, belongs to physics, it belongs in, not in philosophy, it belongs in physics. And that's where a big problem has been all these thousands of years, that people have included existence as part of philosophy, when it's not, it has nothing to do with philosophy. It has to do with the foundations of physics. And that's where we draw the line in rational physics with whatever has happened before then. Okay. But then uh, we have uh, these things, knowledge, values, reason, and mind. All those are opinions. That's religion. All those four words there, and art, that's, you know, that's all religion. Uh, it's religion because religion is not belief in God, disbelief in God, or maybe God exists. I don't know if God exists, you know, uh, um, agnostic. No, uh, religion is opinion. Religion means opinion personal opinion and until we get that straight people will will say oh you you, you call a, a religionist yeah she was a religious she was a Hare Krishna she was a you know a, uh, what is it uh, uh, a Jehovah's Witness that's what she was a Mormon going door to door you know selling Bibles that's what she was uh, any person who uses the word knowledge epistemology Metaphysics is doing religion, okay? That's according to rational science. That's how we dismiss all that. We say, no, you're doing religion. So we don't care about that. And so let's get into that. Let's find out, let's, let's zero in on what, um, what physics is and what, um, what philosophy is. Let me clear this here. Um, here's my side of it. Well, let's compare that just in case. Uh, Okay, here's uh, the visitor's uh, version and my version, the rational scientific version. Physics, we divide it clearly, uh, very precisely. Physics deals with objects, causes, and mechanism. Physics deals with what exists. Physics is the science of existence. Philosophy, on the other hand, deals with concepts and it tries to explain reasons and purpose, why someone did something. It could be something related to psychiatry. It could be something related to history. It could be related to anything that deals with human behavior. Uh, philosophy is the science of behavior, and physics is the science of existence. So now we can talk clearly about it. Why are they uh, explanations? Because that's what science is. Science is only about giving rational explanations, what we don't have today. We don't have rational explanations because no one has made a, 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 a distinguishing, you know, no one distinguished uh, science from religion. Uh, you know, we, we, they have all this uh, stuff where they bring in mathematics, uh, they bring in, which are descriptions, and they've, uh, uh, essentially, what they've done is, um, mainstream, right? Uh, what they've done is, uh, they said science is descriptions. Why? Because mathematics is descriptions. That's how this thing evolved. There's no conspiracy. This is not an issue of conspiracy. It's the way mathematical physics developed since the 17th century so-called scientific revolution. They said, we're going to do experiments. We're going to measure and we're going to come up with equations to analyze or to describe what we measure, what we measure, what we think is there. And then uh, the interpretation, the physical interpretation, became natural philosophy. And that eventually evolved into 
science, what we call science today. And so the, it's the, the evolution of what happened since the 17th century that took us to where we are today when we have all idiotic physical interpretation from quantum mechanics and from general relativity. Why? Because the, all they did is math, describe, and then when you say, well, what's the explanation? What's the physical interpretation? And they say, oh, that's philosophy. And all that philosophy is irrational. So we still don't know how Mother Nature runs her shop. We still don't know how gravity works. We don't know what light is. We don't know uh, uh, what is, you know, magnetic field. We don't know how a magnet attracts another, but that's philosophy. And so a person who wants that kind of information wants to say, well, how does the universe, what's happening out there in this invisible world? What are Mother Nature's secret agents? You never get to that because they dismiss that as philosophy. And a philosopher, he said, yeah, we deal with what exists. And then they don't define the word exist, property. Okay, so they have all these notions where what exists depends on the, on the observer. And at what we know, and know is, what did uh, Plato say is knowledge, which is the, essentially the definition we have today, justified true belief. Belief is your personal belief. That's not what science is. Science is objective. Science only deals with what is independent of the observer. We have to kill all observers. Mafia style, we wipe out the witness. Once you wipe out all life in the universe, then we can find out whether God exists independently of all those uh, people who were believing that there is a God and that makes miracles and so on. You have to kill the observer. Kill the observer. Uh, that's, and with the observer dies consciousness, knowledge, epistemology, ontology, uh, metaphysics, you name it, it all dies. We get rid of sensations. We don't want sensations. No more see, touch, hear, taste, no uh, smell. None of that. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing in rational science. So until we get that underneath our belt, uh, we're going to have problems. We we need to understand what rational science is, and what rational science does is get rid of the observer and make crisp definitions that can be used consistently it's all got to be black and white because otherwise we go chasing around in circles that's that's exactly where we are today okay um here's uh where all that takes us to it takes us to the division between science and religion okay and what is science well physics uh is objects and causes and mechanisms philosophy deals with reasons and purpose and on the other side, we have religion. Here, we're going to put Ayn Rand on this side, on the religious side. Uh, she just gave us her opinions and beliefs, specifically consciousness and sensations at the bottom there. Uh, she talked about truth, fact, knowledge, proof, evidence, consciousness, and sensations. I mean, I think I covered every word that she used, which, was, which she had in her vocabulary. And I'm going to justify that very clearly because you're going to see hundreds of notion of uh, uh, mentions of the word consciousness in her books in fact in, in just a single book <laughs> okay okay uh supernatural theories what because the theory can be imagined but uh you you're going to introduce magic to produce the uh you know the the phenomena to explain the phenomena you know you, you're going to introduce a spirit maybe and say well the spirit moved the curtain and, uh, you know, if you can draw a spirit and you draw Casper, the friendly ghost, and you say, well, Casper moved the curtain. Okay, fine. Uh, we, we can all deal with that. Uh, but uh, then the, um, the explanation is magical. On the other hand, irrational theories, which includes all the ones on the bottom, mathematical physics in every way, shape, or form, theism, atheism, agnosticism, epistemology and ontology, metaphysics, all that is irrational. And it's irrational because the observer is introduced. It's all opinion. It's all about what we know and how we know it, which is what Ayn Rand essentially dealt with. And what we do is, uh, you see there a big X uh, over the senses, okay, the so-called five senses, which are really only one sense. We don't have five senses. We only have the sense of touch. That's the only sense we have. And people have divided all these different senses, which are essentially variations of the sense of touch. But no, when, when we introduce the observer, that's when you run into trouble. And uh, consciousness uh, 
It comes right after sensation. You sense, and now you have consciousness, and you start saying, well, what do I think? What, what is my opinion? What do I believe in? What do I think I saw? And that's where we separate rational science from all this stuff. We have to make it objective. We need to find out how the universe works clockwork. Okay? It's, it's clockwork universe. You, you, you want to know how, why uh, the earth doesn't run away from the sun or why the moon doesn't run away from the earth. You're not going to do that with consciousness. You're not going to do that with knowledge and epistemology and all that other stuff. Okay? Okay? And... Um, uh, here's uh continue with some of the comments because yeah there were there were a lot of comments related to the difference between physics and philosophy okay essentially that's that's where we were and um uh it is true that she did not lay the foundations of physics yeah i know she did she tried okay she tried that's the problem the problem is she tried to lay the foundation of physics whether she knew it or not because she talked about what exists and what an object is that belongs exclusively to physics. She calls it philosophy. You call it philosophy. That's 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 a separate issue. But you know, you 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 have to understand where we're coming from, where rational science comes from. We dismiss anything, uh, or or in reverse. Whenever someone uses the word existence or the word object, they've come into physics, whether they know it or not. That's that's where we're going to draw the line. Um, she was not a philosopher of physics. No such thing. No such thing as a philosopher of physics, a philosopher of science. Um, uh, there's only physics and philosophy. Philosophy uh, tries to explain purpose and reason, why someone does something, why someone behaved in a certain way. That's, the, that's what philosophy is. It's not, as we will see in a minute, the love of wisdom, whatever that nonsense is okay, that Aristotle created there. Uh, and then, as you can see, uh, everywhere she introduced the observer. It says, uh, it does not amount to religion. Religion is only when you introduce the observer. That's when you get into religion, because you get into opinions. You get into, uh, you, know, what something, uh, you know, what someone thinks, what someone believes in. And that's where we get in, introduced. Uh, that's, that's when philosophy, so-called philosophy, becomes religion, when the observer is introduced in there. Okay? It studies, no, it, uh, philosophy doesn't study anything. Uh, physics doesn't study anything. Science doesn't study anything. Let's get rid of the word study. Anyone can study and not understand anything or explain anything. Uh, science explains. It doesn't study. Okay, so let's get rid of the word study. Anyone using the word study will have a problem with rational science because science is about explaining, not about studying. Okay, that's the first one. Not just the fundamental nature of physical objects. Yeah, that's what uh, uh, that belongs to physics, not to philosophy. But the nature of concepts and how they relate to physical reality. No reason to put physical reality because reality only refers to that which is physical. And man and the foundations of ethics. These are all things we need to know. And as you can see, I underlined, uh, uh, what is it? Man, ethics, no. All those have to do with religion. That has to do with opinion, has to do with observers. And it's very hard to get the observer out. We have no observers in science, in science, let alone physics and, uh, and um, uh, philosophy. Philosophy, you just have to say why the person acted in a certain way. But uh, you, can't, you can't introduce the witness. You can't introduce testimony. You can't justify it, okay? Science stops at, because you can't introduce evidence. You, you, science stops at explanation, objective explanation. Why did Napoleon go to Waterloo? Well, he wanted to become famous, period. That's the theory. Now you're going to introduce evidence, and now you're introducing, uh, you know, uh, in a sense, an observer. You're saying, well, this is the reason I believe this. That's different than saying what it is, why the person did it. So we have the theory and we have the justification or evidence to support it. That's where we run into trouble. People mix those things. Okay? You can always introduce evidence and so on, but we have to distinguish evidence from the theory. That's where we have a big, big problem today. People confuse the evidence with the theory, okay? 
that's where we're going to run into trouble with Ayn Rand as well. And not only with her, but a whole bunch of people out there. Okay, uh, so yeah, I did put uh, Ayn Rand just like all other philosophers, okay? Uh, right, uh, right at the bottom, you'll see her name there, okay? Uh, they, they all did the same thing. Uh, we dismiss them in rational sciences. <clears throat> Ordinary people who tried to do something never figured it out. Um, here uh, we start now with uh, Mr. Aristotle, and he's the first guy to define philosophy, the love of wisdom, I guess. Uh, apparently someone did it before him. Someone say, you know, I'm sure that word existed uh, among Greeks uh, a lot earlier than Aristotle. Okay, so what does uh, Aristotle, good old Ari, say about philosophy? What is philosophy? He says, all men consider philosophy, love of wisdom, right? Uh, as concerned with first causes and principles, okay? Wisdom is knowledge about certain principles and causes. Well, we got a problem. We got a serious problem right there because uh, causes belongs to physics, not to philosophy, okay? And yeah, Aristotle mixed all those. He, he wrote books where he talk, started talking about physics and what exists and what an object is, and then went all the way and introduced the observers all the way and what we can prove and what, what evidence we have. And again, mixing that with the, with the foundations is where the problem lies. And then he talked about knowledge. To this day, we have not been able to define the word knowledge. You can look it up. Don't take my word for it. Uh, go to Stanford Encyclopedia of uh, Philosophy. You go to the Wikipedia and they have all these long explanations of what knowledge is. No one has been able to figure out what knowledge is. And so, yeah, I do define knowledge, uh, what knowledge is. I'm going to get to that when I get to Ayn Rand's notion of knowledge. Okay, but I just want you to know that knowledge is a, is a belief, okay, uh, according to how it's been used until today. Uh, justified true belief from uh, Plato, that's exactly what it means today. Nothing has changed at all, okay. And so, yeah, the, there's no, no improvement since the days of Plato uh, and, uh, and Aristotle. Um, what else do I want to cover here uh, today while well, we're still having a problem? Well, here's the definition of philosophy that can't, comes out of that that we have from the Wikipedia, okay? And uh, it says, philosophy, love of wisdom is the study of general and fundamental questions about existence, knowledge, values, reason, mind, and language. Again, they mix it all, they bundle it all up, and they say, oh, it's, it includes everything, existence, knowledge. No. And as a re uh, and, and these are the questions, the uh, classical philosophical questions include, is it possible to know anything? What's that got to do with science? <laughs> is it possible to know? means to believe anything. Yeah, I guess uh, you can believe in anything you want. Uh, is it uh, possible to prove it, to introduce evidence and, comp and create a little club and say, well, this club believes in this knowledge and this other club believes in the opposite knowledge? I mean, you can have a club that says, yeah, God exists, and another cl uh, club that says God doesn't exist. And in each one of these clubs, they introduce knowledge, and they introduce evidence, and they introduce all kinds of stuff. And who's right? I mean, we have these clubs already today, you know, so is it possible to believe in anything? Yeah, I guess you can believe in anything you want. What is most real? Well, just define the word real, and you'll know what is real. You want to know if God exists, define the word exist, among also the word God, by the way. Is there a best way to live? Nonsense, absolute nonsense. That's not a question of philosophy. That's a question of, uh, of you know, uh, it's a opinion. I think you should live this way. And then Trump says, no, I think you should live this other way. <laughs> you know, the bosses up there, they say how you should live, okay? No, you live any way you want. I mean, you, these are recommendations. This has nothing to do really with, with explaining something, which is what science is about. You're not explaining anything but say, by saying, this is the way you should live. Okay? Is it better to be just or unjust? What does that have to do with anything? I mean, <laughs> uh, do humans have free will? What does that have to do with explaining? None of these, is, none of these things answer explanations that's what science is about and philosophy is one of the two branches of science that's where we're going to draw the line between rational science and whatever came before okay we have an, a paradigm shift and of course then you get to some people who do philosophy of science okay 
And uh, again, philosophy of uh, physics, philosophy of science, there's no such thing. And you can see here where, where we draw the line with these people. They say, it's a subfield of philosophy. <laughs> okay, they're going to talk about science. It's a subfield of philosophy. Concerned with the foundations, methods, and implications of science. The central questions of this study concern what qualifies a science as the reliability reliability means you're going to prove something you're going to you're going to introduce evidence and you're going to believe one thing and the other guy's going to believe something else is that what reliability refers to we don't use reliability we don't verify anything we just have to state the uh, you know uh, the definitions and what the objects are that's it there's no reliability about it it says reliability of scientific theories and the ultimate purpose of science. This discipline overlaps with what? <laughs> Metaphysics, ontology, and epistemology. Absolutely not. Uh, you know, th th this is all stuff that the philosophers and the mathematicians created uh, where they say, well, how do you know that you know and what exists? But what exists is not determined but what exists independent of the observer. Ontology is all related to what exists as related to the observer, sensations and uh, what you think exists. And then you have uh, metaphysics, which is, uh, I'm going to get to metaphysics in a little while, but uh, for example, when it explores the relationship between science and truth. Truth? What is truth? Truth, what is true to you is a lie to me. There is no such thing as truth. And these people keep in inserting uh, knowledge, truth, sensations into every definition. And I like the last part. It says, there is no consensus among philosophers about many of the central problems concerned with the philosophy of science. Of course, <laughs> because, they, because of what comes next, is whether science can, be re, can reveal the truth about unobservable things. Okay? And so what have we learned from all this? We learned that we don't know anything. Uh, you know, people say, well, what can we know? Well, we never will know anything. Why? Because they never defined the term. They, we, we were chasing our tails around for centuries and passing that down from one generation to the another. Okay, I'm going to continue with this line of uh, argument uh, next time. Let's go with the question. Let's see what I got here. Well, I got a little bit. Of, I got a few questions. <laughs> let's see what we got. Uh, uh, let's see if I can find the... I don't hear nothing like Rand, but her ideas and the Rand influence intellectual hair, uh, intell influence David Harriman's critique of physics were what helped lead me to you. Well, thanks, Mike. Uh, but uh, you know, if you if that led you to me, that's fine. Uh, in the case of Dave, whom you know, um, uh, it was uh, Von Mises uh, and his Austrian school that led him to me. Well, how how you guys came to me is one issue. The other issue is what Ain objectively said, which is what I want to cover in this series, okay? Let's go with the uh, next one. Uh, I know you are, yeah, I'm not human, uh, <laughs> Louise, I'm not human, so uh, don't, don't mind me because I come from a different planet. Uh, <laughs> or understand before one of us dies, yeah. Uh, it's not really, uh, it, it, it is not really a religion if you have reasons based on reality for accepting her ideas, although I know you disagree with those reasons, uh, uh, disagree those reasons exist. Okay, uh, let's see if we got questions here, let's see if I can find one. Uh, okay, this rhetoric, give me a second here. Okay, there's a debate between people there. Well, there's a big debate there among some of the viewers. Not really any question uh, that I can see specifically. You got one minute to give me a question. Meanwhile, I'll just summarize that. Um, the uh, what I'm the notion that I'm trying to get through today, okay, is that there's a difference between what rational science does. We have a paradigm sh uh, shift since the uh, 20th century to the 21st century. Uh, we're going to call it rational science, the rational scientific method. It has nothing at all to do with what came before. Doesn't mean you have to accept it. You have to just understand it and and realize that it is different. 
And if, if you can't see a difference between rational science and what some of these philosophers did, we got a problem. We need to clarify what it is that where we, where we disagree or where we have a misunderstanding. Okay. We, we need to clarify that. We need to highlight that. And uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be a big problem right there and then because part of the problem is that people introduce words of ordinary speech and rational science has created a new language, a concise, precise language, a black and white kind of language. And people are not used to that because, well, that's not what it means in ordinary speech. Yeah, and that's the, that's the problem. The problem we can't bring the notions of ordinary speech into the scientific uh, arena. Okay? That's, that's part of the problem. The other one is that they introduce observers, and we're, we're making rational science observer-free. So these are the things you have to keep in mind in the next couple sessions when I'm going to be talking about Ayn Rand. Uh, I'm picking on Ayn Rand, by the way, uh, as a, an example, just like all the others. I could have picked on, on Sartre. I could have bit, uh, picked, up, uh, picked on uh, Wittgenstein. As far as we're concerned, rational science, they're all the same. They're all the same because they never define what philosophy is. And philosophy has been defined as, you know, uh, study of existence, knowledge, all that stuff. No, no, you can't bundle it all up and say, oh, that's philosophy. It's my way of thinking or whatever. No, we have to say, what is the purpose of philosophy? Are we, are we trying to explain something with philosophy? If we're trying to explain, like, people say, well, how this universe works, where we come from, all that stuff, that belongs to physics. And, and then what does that leave for philosophy? Well, that leaves behavior, explain behavior, especially of humans. Okay, you can even talk about pets, behavior of pets, I guess. Why, why the dog did this? Why, why did the dog wa wag his tail? You know, you, you can explain anything you want in that sense. Okay, that's what philosophy is about. Otherwise, you're not explaining anything. Uh, to say, how do we know what we know, what do we know, <clears throat> and you don't define knowledge, oh, we got a problem with all that, because then we're going to get into a wishy-washy barroom talk, you know, you just go in there with a beard and you say whatever you want and nothing is precise. And these are the things that, you know, rational science tries to get rid of. We, we want to get rid of all this opinion, all this subjectivity from science. We want to concentrate on what is. Why? Because we're trying to figure out how this universe works. That's in physics. Okay? Philosophy, well, I don't deal with philosophy, meaning I, I don't explain behavior. I'm not interested in that subject at all. You know, I don't care why someone does something, except perhaps in a historical context. That's probably the only time I deal with philosophy. Otherwise, philosophy has no purpose. What is, what is the purpose of philosophy? And we're going to say, well, what we know. And no, we don't define in any ways whatever definition we have today is that is a synonym of belief, your personal opinion. So what does no mean? And that's what I'll be dealing with in the next couple sessions. Okay. Uh, anyways, I'll quit now and we'll continue later. I'm going to look at a lot of what people wrote there, uh, see if I can find uh, any important thing to address. And a lot of that might be addressed in the next couple of installments, okay? So let's uh, see you on Wednesday. I'm back, to, I'm back in Frankfurt, <laughs> and I'm going to be dealing with Ayn Rand in the next probably two or three uh, lectures. Um, I've got a lot of ground to cover. I can't even get to her definitions yet. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll look at all that, and maybe a lot of the questions will be answered simply by the material that... I'll be exposing. We'll see you on Wednesday, same time, same station. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.